Thank you. Um, I would like to show you some of my uh, bio art works. I'm not only doing bio art, and I came to bio art by doing um, computer or interactive art. So interaction always was an important thing for me. And I got fascinated by artificial life and then uh, after a while I found it boring only to work with machines and not with real living things. So this was in the um, early 2000s, at 2004. And I also would, this would be the first piece, but um, in the beginning of my talk, I would like to uh, show you some quotes which have become important for me and perhaps also could be um, a link to our first presenter. Um, during the last years, I got completely fascinated by the work of uh, Jakob von Uxküll and um, he helped me to, found, uh, to find in biology a system which is adequate to perhaps uh, cyberneticians or cybernetics. Uh, which um, enables to think in feedbacks for computer people or artists working with computers. And Uxkull did a little bit the same for biology. Um, so Uxkull's investigations into the animal environment are contemporary with both quantum physics and the artistic avant-garde. And like them, they express the unreserved abandonment of every anthropocentric perspe uh, perspective in the life sciences and the radical dehumanization of the image of nature. This is a quote by Georgia Agamben. And, um, just to make uh, clear what it could be uh, today for our look on, on the living or on the um, biological matter as a not only working, broader, uh, working material, but perhaps uh, um, a chance for a philosophical encounter. The Umwelt is for Uxkühl an environment world which is constituted by more or less broad series of elements called career of significance or marks which are the only things that interest the animal. Let's just jump to um, this slide which shows what uh, Uxkühl means with the term of Umwelt. Umwelt is for different beings, completely different. So the old oak is for the forester. Um, it looks like this here. Then there is a magic Umwelt for a small girl. And there is an Umwelt for, um, as a booty field for an aunt, which is related to the capabilities and the needs to an aunt, of course. And um, Umwelt can be a protection for the lava of a hive beetle, as well as an egg depository for a horn tail. And uh, maybe you already have seen that, so um, my slides are, or the design of my slides is a little bit messed up because we had to make a data conversion. Um, this is um, the function cycle, the very famous function cycle of Uxkull. And um, as the diagram shows, the inner world is divided in two parts. One which receives the impressions. This is the, I think, the upper part. And um, is turned towards the world as sensed. And the other, which is distributed, um, which, which distributes the effects, is turned towards the world of action. Between the mark organ and the action organ lies the watershed of the whole function circle. The mark organ and the action organ are each of them controlled by a rule. The one arranges the impression in the mark organ and so creates the indication. The other arranges the effects produced by an action organ. Uh, sorry. Um, and both rules are focused accurately to the indication of the external world, the appearance of which the signal for the indications to arise and which has then to be dealt with. And what is so important is that the circle forms a unified world for just as in an organism, each part is dependent on the others. 
So this unified world is, um, for, for me as an artist, a very important thing because it makes clear that I, I have not so many possibilities to understand the world, the Umwelt, from an animal. I have to acknowledge that it might be completely different to my Umwelt and my understanding of, a world, of the world as a whole. And that just means, uh, or leads me to a kind of respect to animals, uh, that I don't use them as a, just uh, a medium, perhaps. Um, Jakob von Uxke, what is very important also with this uh, function circle is the new circle, which is established uh, in, in the brain or in the nerve cells from the animal, uh, between the mark organ and the action organ. And this new circle, this is the inner world, which is, uh, which is created by uh, the small brain of the creatures or the bigger brain of the humans. And this has an influence also on the um, mark organ and um, further on the action organ. And this inner world um, is a thing which has no serious connection or which cannot be seen from exterior. So we have to be aware that uh, sharing the thoughts or the imaginations with an animal is still a, a very difficult endeavor. And how does this lead to interspecies communication? So uh, uh, was doing lots of experiments, especially um, he as a biologist, he said that the only serious experiment you can do is to go into the environment of the animal, of the creature, and to see it there and not in the laboratory. Um, one thing he did was inventing a, a tool for dogs for the blinds, and uh, the, the basis of this tool or interface, we would say today, um, is the, oh, I even don't know the word, the Bogengänge, the, um, the inner uh, ear, which has three different arches, and these are going into each uh, the um, X, Y, Z direction of the space, and that make it possible that we here have a spatial, um, that our auditory uh, organ is, is a spatial one. And um, man and dog have the same spatial organ. And this is a car he invented for the dog, that the dog learns to understand the human uh, which is blind. And um, you can see, hmm? how is that working? No? <laughs> Okay. Oh, it's not right. So, um, the green one? No. This here? <laughs> okay, let's try without that. Um, so, the, the, the tall thing. Uh, indicates the height of a person, of a blind person. Okay, thank you. Um, and um, you can see that there is a certain distance between the, the dog and the human, and or the virtual human, and that the dog should learn to deal with steps. Therefore, the car is a bit longer than the dog, and uh, uh, the doc in this way can learn that just uh, moving too fast would make the person fall, perhaps. And Uxkru, uh, together with his assistant, no, the, um, he designed also an obstacle course for the training of the guide dogs. And uh, that you can see here, so they had to invent or to um, to establish all the areas, the possible areas for the blinds in a city and to test the car in this neighborhood. So this is a very special habitat in a way for this ensemble, for these two, 
two creatures working together. And it in test environment for um, um, yeah, for the, the installation. Um, the habitat is one important thing for me, and um, my further works will be on the habitat for different creatures and sharing the habitat. Therefore, I thought uh, I should give you a look on another person working on very special um, animal habitats. This is Temple Crandin. Some of you may know her. She found uh, she is herself. Uh, an autistic person, and by that she learned that um, she needs a different spatial environment than a normal person, and she had a very well understanding for um, cows, and um, she designed the um, cattle layouts uh, in a very different way. So she established this curved um, corridors, and um, by doing so, she um, achieved that the cows are not hurting themselves so much when they are uh, driven to um, the slaughter. Animals, their senses, and their habitats. So now I would switch to my artworks, if I'm allowed to. <laughs> Um, we, I think we won't have the time to go into details here, but um, just to explain what um, is the relation between what I was um, telling about Uxkul and my work. Um, to each work I have such a diagram, and the diagram shows the relation between the environment, the Umwelt, and the man and the animals. The animals here, in that case, are midges. And um, man has um, a shared environment with the midges, but uh, he also makes machines, and the machines interact with the environment, and so on. Uh, this was a work I started in 2004. Um, it's a work for midges and computers and man. And here you can see it uh, at Linz, uh, at the Asa Electronica. Um, this is a camera, and with a camera you, you observe the swarms of midges. But as you can imagine, you cannot find always swarms of midges. So what are you doing? You have to attract them. And there is a way to attract midges, which is very well known. This is by sound. So um, here I have a chart where you can see uh, at which uh, frequency um, um, specific flies or midges are attracted uh, to possible loudspeakers, and uh, it's based on the communication with the opposite sex. There's no sound. Sophia, could you just check the sound? You're working on it, okay. Und die senden verschiedene Tonhöhen aus. Die sind allerdings in ihrer Wirksamkeit auf Mücken abhängig von der Temperatur. Deshalb ist hier ein Thermometer, zeigt heute 30 Grad. Stellen wir mal ein, 30 Grad ungefähr. Und jetzt können wir hier an diesem Knopf, jetzt hören wir schon einen ziemlich relativ tiefen Ton, das sind nur die Obertöne, die wir jetzt hören. Und jetzt gehen wir mal auf eine Frequenz von einem dieser Flugobjekte, sprich Mücken. Das hier, ein Feldia Dissidenz, ist eine Sorte von Zuckmücken. Das nächste ist als Vergleich die Frequenz des Flügelschlags der Biene, der Honigbiene. Das nächste ist auch eine Sorte von ähm, Chironomiden, das heißt Zuckmücken. Allerdings die Frühlingsgeneration, äh, die Spring Generation. Chironomus plumosus Fall Generation, also im Herbst. Die müssten wir jetzt eigentlich einstellen. Edis Wechsans, das äh, sind Schnaken, also Stechmücken. Toxorynchitis brevipalpis, das ist auch eine Art von Zuckmücke. Und Culex pipiens ist auch eine Stechmücke. Das heißt, äh, umso kälter es ist, umso tiefer ist die Frequenz, auf die die Mücken reagieren. 
Man sieht hier noch, das ist alles synthetischer weiblicher ähm, Flügelschlag-Sound. Also es sind nur die ähm, Frequenzen der Flügelschläge der Weibchen effektiv, und zwar effektiv auf die Menschen. Die Menschen treten in Schwärmen auf, weil sie so schlecht, weil die Weibchen so schlecht sehen können, dass sie die Menschen nur finden, wenn die sich in Schwärme zusammenrotten. Und wir stehen jetzt hier und warten darauf, dass die Mücken kommen, die Schwärme von Menschen kommen. Und deshalb wird hier immer in einem Zyklus von sechs Sekunden die Frequenz ausgesendet, weil man weiß, dass die Mücken nie länger als sechs Sekunden dieses Geräusch von sich geben oder diese Rhythmen eben in sich haben. Das heißt, es gibt kürzere Rhythmen, aber maximal sind es eben fünf bis sechs Sekunden. Und deshalb ist es hier auch so simuliert. Wir wissen ja auch alle, dass die Mücken ganz... I stop that here and go over to the indoor installation um, from this piece. Um, this is bio art in a more traditional sense because there the creatures are not present. Uh, they are just recorded by, on video and um, we have a whole um, computer or a computer system. We program that um, in C++ and here you see in the background the traces of the midges and creatures, virtual creatures eating in a way uh, the traces and that should allow to know more about the structure of the swarms on a screen that you can find out where are the densest points of the swarm and or where are they uh, finding themselves together and um, the creatures they store uh, the information or inherit the information they don't store it in a traditional way but they give it uh, to their offspring and so uh, the knowledge is kept in the system um, so this is a um, um, interface from this installation on top you can choose the different videos which are available by um, oh wireless LAN transfer to the indoor installation and you can choose the parameters of the creatures and um, here you see the install, indoor installation at the um, Balraf Richards Museum in Cologne and um, people can play around with uh, the creatures that makes it possible that you experience yourself the dynamics of what's going on with the swarms. And that is a very effective way just to, to learn about uh, the different density of the swarms. Because uh, once the people are, are interacting with uh, the video or the real-time installation, um, you, you just see that the rhythms of nature are much slower than what you are expecting in a computer game or at an interface, a normal interface. So here you can alter the, the, the length of the limbs or the velocity of the creatures. And uh, it has been shown that for dense swarms you need uh, creatures with uh, a small number of cells and um, slow veloc uh, high velocity on f for such uh, low dense swarms, you need a uh, low velocity and a large number of cells. And these needles, uh, they sense the environment on the screen. In a way that uh, that is old fashioned and that brought me, but it brought me to to the decision that I in future times would like, uh, oh, only five minutes. So we should fast go over to other works. Um, this is um, the Treibhaus Converter, the Greenhouse Converter. It's existing in, uh, in a pump, um, water, a water fountain, and uh, an aquarium consisting in this kind of uh, algae and water fleas. And um, I also have to skip that. So it is, um, um, I 
um, it's a quote to Stafford Beer, who worked also with Daphnia, but in a different way. And um, this is a state of uh, my cybernetic system. The greenhouse converter is a kind of cybernetic system, which is regulated uh, on its own or just by by itself. Because if you use uh, LEDs, LEDs have, have both qualities. They can sense and they are effector, so they can glow as well as sense the light. So we use these two cycles to, uh, to stabilize the whole system. Sound is missing. Yeah. So I found out that um, the CO2 close to fountains, it's a little bit lower than the CO2 um, at the corner of the streets because the CO2 uh, is bound by uh, humidity. So um, if you want to clean the air from CO2, you just need a fountain or uh, a storm in the, in the sea, in the ocean. And by storm, the water is mixed with the air and all the CO2 from the air goes into the water. And that is what happens also in this installation. But uh, it's built, it's a kind of sculpture which is built that you can, by your own, the force of your own hand, uh, pump the water and rich with the gases to the aquarium. And here you have a super um, a video surveillance system which shows you in which state the system has been days before and how it alters over the time and with the growth of the algae and the water fleas. So now you see the measurement of the light and according to the measurement then the illumination is um, affected. So that shows that there are eno enough algae, there is enough food for the Daphnia um, and therefore you, you see here beloved and this is a quote to um, Lynn Margulis, who um, is a researcher who found out the importance from the symbiosis for evolution. As we are running out of time, I think we should skip here and I'm open to questions later. I would like, very much like to show the last video because it's again a video on midges and swarms and I think it's three minutes. We have done that at when we went with our students to the item competition uh, 2010 to, um, to Boston. And um, as um, we did a um, speculative artwork, uh, um, Supercell, um, a store exclusively for uh, products from Synthetic Biology, and this was one of them. Normally, teachers are not allowed to do art pieces uh, during the item, but we did that um, uh, as it has been necessary just to be the pre-runner or to show the students how to design possible products for our department store.
So we pre pretended to wish to raise um, midges which are replacing lambs in the city because we found that uh, swarming um, or swarms from glowing midges would be much nicer than the normal lightning. And um, uh, we invented together with scientists a possible way to train the midges and that they can give the information even to their offspring that you can culture swarms uh, which are taking the shape of letters and even words. And the aim of the project was that we define projects which are feasible within a time span of 10 years, up to 10 years. These are the larvae of the midges. In a company in Poland. Here they are packed. These were the problems we, uh, we had then later with our product. So after a while they lost their shape. Because uh, they lost the information during the, um, between the generations. And still, light as a attractor was stronger than genetics. Okay, thank you.